And incidentally, it's exactly 30 years since I first played this concerto with, an, with this particular concerto with an orchestra. Mm. Okay. Uh, I was 14. I played Haydn D major with a Tasmanian chamber orchestra. Okay. That was my first time playing with an orchestra, and uh, and you know now 30 years later, mm. uh, I get to play this concerto. You know, it actually as a cello we don't get to play this concerto very much. It's usually the Haydn C major. Everybody plays the other concerto, mm -hmm. uh, and of course that is a fantastic work too. Mm -hmm. But we were so privileged with the opportunity of playing this one, mm -hmm. because there are, in this context of us being so spread apart, mm -hmm. there are so many intimate moments about this concerto that actually I felt brought us together. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think Haydn C major is probably more for 2022. Right now, in this very uncertain time, yes. Haydn D major, <laughs> well put. For me, it's, it's, uh, it's more interesting because, you know, ultimately, if you have to, have to ask me to, to say three words about this concerto, it's probably elegance, mm -hmm. refinement, mm -hmm. and charm. Mm -hmm. And yet the piece, as you know, is pretty difficult. Oh, yes. It's very oh, challenging. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And so you have to find the dignity, mm -hmm. you know, while you're mm -hmm. kind of maneuvering between all these uh, mm -hmm. passages. Uh, a dignified way of expressing mm -hmm. this this uh, this beauty. It's a little bit like now, mm -hmm. because obviously we are all suffering, not just musicians, mm -hmm. but I think, mm -hmm. you know, human race is yeah. suffering from this pandemic. But at the same time, I think it's very important for us to maintain this dignity and mm -hmm. also to, to, to find hope mm -hmm. and to, to, to discover beauty mm -hmm. in our current new norm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's great that Arm and yourself has brought this opportunity, not just for me, but also for the musicians in Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, to, to come together. So tell us about, uh, tell us about that. Well, um, obviously, during a period where live performances was really problematic, um, where uh, social uh, distancing measures meant that you couldn't have that many musicians on stage at any one time, Musically, of course, it translates to a lot of the challenges that we've just talked about. But of course, uh, there are also wider um, implications than uh, repercussions. And so with the uh, cancellation mm -hmm. of so many performances around the world and in Singapore, uh, it is a really difficult time for our fellow musicians. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Singapore, we were fortunate in that uh, there was support yeah. made available by the government yeah. to musicians mm. uh, and the orchestra was privileged to be able to be the conduit mm. for some of the support through organising concerts, putting them together, involving these musicians mm. so that uh, they could minimally be doing what they used to do a lot. Yeah. As musicians, and I, as slightly older musicians, mm. dare I say, you know, mm. the majority of our musicians are a little younger mm. than me. So uh, I feel that, 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 that there is an opportunity for us to to show some leadership. Yes. And and uh, and in doing so, I really thoroughly enjoyed the experience, and also to include some of our wonderful you know, exactly. composers. Yes. In the whole creative uh, yes. uh, procedure, and that was also for me. Very, very exciting. Yes. Well, tell us about the cadenza. <laughs> so we talked about uh, we did. inviting some young composers to write a uh, cadenza. Now, obviously, cadenzas are supposed to be show showcasing uh, the performer, the soloist, yes. individual instrumental abilities. Mm. My goodness, Jonathan Shing has actually created. <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought, my goodness, how am I going to get through this? Was it a bit of a monster? <laughs> it was a vicious monster. Mm, okay. <laughs> it was a monster with a vengeance. Um, actually, the more I played it, I really enjoyed it because, you know, it has youth elements inside. Mm -hmm. By that, I mean, because I always play the genre mm -hmm. uh, cadenza or the Casado cadenza, mm -hmm. whereas Jonathan Shin's cadenza, there is a hint Mm. of a different flavor yeah. to mm. the traditional cadenzas that mm. we all learned mm. when we were young. Mm. That really attracted me. And the beauty of the slow passages, oh, it's, it's very Jonathan Shing, and it's mm. I, because I knew the guy, mm. I knew the composer before he wrote it. So 
I felt a little closer to the to the material too. So all in all, a win and win situation. You know this um, whole business about perspective. You know this is a wonderful project that we were able to collaborate with you uh, in the context where. There are so many new perspectives at the moment. Yeah. There's so many changing yeah. uh, environments. Yeah. So, so I'm, I, uh, I treasure this memory, and I think uh, like, you know, if if flexibility in the instrumental sense is maturity, I think even as human beings, in this uncertain time, we have to be flexible. We have to we have to carry on with hope, with a sense of purpose, yeah. but but still flexible. I think. Well, I guess on that note, <laughs> yes, uh, this was a lovely conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.